Hey guys, t ball here. Today I'm going to be taking a look at the Imperial Japanese Navy and World of Warships Legends. We'll go over each commander, I'll give you a suggested build for each of them that I've come up with, and then we'll take a look at each class of ship and give you some basic tips and tricks and overall gameplay for those. So for the commanders, keep in mind this is just my own personal preference how I either do play them or would play them if I were using them. And that's just based on how I think the, ship, the line of ships uh, should be played and then looking at each commander's possible combinations. So if you have a different way that you like to set them up, that's perfectly cool. That's the whole point of the commander system. And if you've got a different build, maybe leave it in the comments and I'll check it out below and see how I like it. So for destroyers, the first one we got is Raizo Tanaka. He's the one I would use for destroyers if I had the option of both of them. I would set him up as a torpedo specialist, and for him I'd be using subsurface venture, fragile threat. You can either use back in stock or torpedo safari. Safari extends the torpedo range. This one uh, reduces the reload time. I'd personally use back in stock. And then destroyer be destroyed would be my fourth choice for them. Uh, Takeo Kurita is the other destroyer captain. He's the one I got currently. He has the option to be set up as a gun specialist, but as we'll talk about in the destroyer section, I don't think that's a great idea. So his, his kind of secondary options that they give you allow you to set him, as a, set him up as a torpedo specialist. I just don't think he's his options are as good as Tanaka's, so that's why I prefer Tanaka. But if you do have him, I'd set him up uh, using contact as imminent. Uh, look at me now, back in stock, and smoke on the water. Now for cruisers, you have Gunichi Mikawa. He's the one I currently have. Um, he's I set him up as like a long range threat, kind of making him hard to hit, increasing his invasion. I think that's kind of how they intend him to play. I got burn it down, um, full speed ahead, sponge, and steer clear. Um, but if you have Yamamoto. He's, I consider Yamamoto probably one of, if not the best commanders in the game, so if I get him unlocked, he'll immediately go on every Japanese cruiser, as well as be one of the inspirations on pretty much all my other cruisers. So I'd set him up as a... He's definitely a gun specialist, and he's got extremely good offensive skills. How I'd set him up is a beyond range igniter punch through and fixated would be the four that I'd go with for him. Uh, battleship commanders, I do have both of them unlocked. Uh, Nobutake Kondo, or I think his name's Kondo Nobutake. Some of these Japanese guys I can't tell. <laughs> I don't know. It says Kondo here and then Nobutake there, so you guys let me know. <laughs> Um, he's he can be set up long range. I actually set him up uh, as kind of a close range brawler when I had him um, using the skilled brawler, porcupine, firefighter, master mechanic. As we'll talk about in the battleship battleship section, I think the Japanese battleships tend to play better at long range. That's kind of their advantage of the line. Are all built towards long range, so. You can also set up as a long-range specialist using these ones. I just, for whatever reason, when I, I think I was just trying him out, but I have him set up as a secondary specialist to, kind of as a counter to Takeo Takagi. But you know, you could just based on if you want long-range, use these. If you want a short-range brawler, use those. So that'll come down to your own personal play style. Takeo Takagi, in my mind, is the much better Japanese battleship commander. I have him, have him set up as long-range distance, as I alluded to. Flammable cannoneer, gyrating drill bits, marksmanship, and reaching out. Um, so he's a pretty good commander. He's also a possibility to use as inspiration for some of the other battleship commanders in the game. So that's it for the commanders. We'll jump right into the destroyers. So how you know you're playing against a good Japanese destroyer player is if you never see him in the game, he doesn't show up on the map, and then from time to time he'll get a big wall of torpedoes coming at you from 
seemingly out of nowhere. <laughs> that's, that's, that's what you want to be doing in these ships. They're kind of like the ninjas of the World of War ships. So they all have really good uh, concealment factors. They all have ranges that vastly exceed their concealment torpedo ranges, that is. Uh, the tier 5 just started off with a lower torpedo range, but once you upgrade the torpedoes, then it reverts to a traditional Japanese destroyer. So, really long torpedo range, really high quality torpedoes that do a lot of damage, good speed, and all that stuff. Everything about the torpedoes is pretty good. And, like I said, the concealment's really good, too. So, you put those two in combination with each other. They're just classic torpedo boats, um, destroyer configurations. So, downsides of the line, the, the mobility's usually kind of a detriment on most of these ships. And the guns are, you know, they're probably the worst guns in the game, at least as of right now. The problem I see a lot of players having with the Japanese destroyers is they play them like they don't even have guns, period. You can use the guns, they're not effective, but there's certain situations that I recommend using them in, like, for instance, number one, if you have to use the guns, <laughs> you know, what does that mean? I mean, if you're, if you have a destroyer or something closing in on you and, you know, your options are either to run away and get shot in the back until you die, or, you know, you can actually shoot them, and you can actually win some gun battles from time to time, you'd be surprised, but, and you never know, your team might actually help you out, it's kind of a novel concept, but it does happen on occasion, but, you know, if you're, basically if you're defending yourself, use your gun, um, and then also look for opportunities where you have a ship that's really low on HP, that you can potentially finish off. You know, you'd rather, I mean, like, if you're relying on your torpedoes only, either you're, you can be in between reloads, or uh, the torpedoes would take, you know, 45 seconds to get to your target or whatever. You know, it, whereas if you, if you can hit him with a couple of salvos of HE and he's dead, well, you'd, you you want to do that. You know, I see Japanese destroyers ignoring targets that they could potentially remove from the map relying on their teammates to do it. I understand the desire to be remain undetected, but there you know, you have to use your judgment and get the chips off the map if you can. So if if you're able to do it with your guns and the uh, opportunities are there, then jump on the opportunity and take advantage. But, you know, getting back to the hallmark of the ship, it's obviously the stealth torpedo play now. Basically what you want to Ideally, what you want to be doing is closing in within range, launching the salvo, disengaging, reloading the torpedoes, and then rinse and repeat. Close back in, another salvo, disengage, and you, to the extent that you can remain undetected while doing this, that's obviously preferable. You want to be careful about planes that are flying around, they can spot you better than surface ships a lot of times, especially if you're utilizing, like, uh, islands and stuff like that to be remained undetected but you know other than that just rely on your ship's concealment rating and you know I, I personally find the destroyer the Japanese destroyer line to be the most fun destroyer line in the game and probably for me personally I think it's the line that I'm the best at so it kind of depends on your play style it's probably not for everyone but I find it to be pretty effective. Yeah, moving on to the cruisers. I enjoy the Japanese cruiser line. I tend to play them as like a long range, kind of a harassment type of ship. Uh, slinging fire, you know, across the map and then dodging incoming fire. They do have good maneuverability, good mobility in general. There's a little bit of variation ship to ship in this line, but just talking in general, they tend to have good uh, ability to move around, good concealment. So if you use the concealment and the kind of maneuverability of the ships uh, in conjunction with each other, you want to be avoiding incoming fires. So either play it a little more stealthy and I'll take some shots until you see someone's targeting you, then get back into cover, let the guns go silent, drop off their map, and then maybe reposition yourself. Or if you're going to play them... Um, 
relying more on your mobility. That's when you want to be kind of a longer range, dancing around. A lot of, uh, well, some of these ships in the line have slower gun traverses, so if you are bobbing and weaving, you do want to keep that in mind. You might have to uh, let the turrets either catch up naturally on their own or uh, kind of turn back in towards the target that you're just turned away from to dodge the shot to get the turret back or the gun pointing back towards your target. A little bit of a challenge, but once you get the hang of it, it's not too bad. Shell selection on these puppies, you want to be using HE vast majority of the time. The reason's twofold. The HE, the chance to cause fire in these ships is really good. Uh, some of the ships, it's actually remarkably higher than the other ones. But uh, HE shells themselves, starting at the Furutaka, which is the, what's that, the tier 4, I think. That's when the shells themselves actually have a really good base damage value, so. Uh, it's significantly higher than the American HE shells. So just landing the shots on their own, assuming they're able to penetrate, will cause quite a bit of damage. And then you couple that with uh, increased chance to catch fires and uh, HE shells become a very effective shell over the course of a battle. Now, if you follow how I tailored the commanders too, I do kind of enhance the ability of the HE shells to be burning your targets down as well, so keep that in mind. But that's how I use the guns on these ships, and again I do find them to be very effective. The one thing you want to keep in mind though when you're playing against the ships or playing with them is they do have extremely effective torpedoes on them as well. They're comparable in terms of uh, characteristics to the destroyer line of torpedoes. Good range, very good speed on them, you know, able to do quite a bit of damage. Some of these ships have a torpedo launcher on each side, so you can consider firing a salvo, pulling a circle 180 degrees, firing off the other side. At this point in the game, I don't think a lot of players would be expecting that. I don't see it done against me very often, um, but... I think it's a very effective move. I'll pull it off sometimes and it catches people kind of unaware. But you do want to keep that in mind if you do see a Japanese cruiser kind of... If it turns sideways to you, it's probably attempting to launch torpedoes and then if it... If it turns all the way around and starts going the other way, you do have to keep in mind that there may be multiple sets of torpedoes in the water heading your way, so... But it, the effective high or the the effective HE shell on this ship, coupled with effective torpedoes, I think it makes the Japanese cruiser line a very fun to play, a very effective ship, and very dangerous in uh, the right situation. I'm taking a look at the battleships in the Japanese lineup. They kind of start off as quick, nimble, lightly armored battleships. But the common characteristics throughout the line are really powerful guns, very long firing ranges, usually if not always the longest at the tier, at least of the ships we have currently in the game. And they tend to be pretty accurate compared to the other ships at that tier. So, well, let's say a Congo, for instance, might not be as accurate as you'd want at long range, it's going to be more accurate than New York. So, on paper, they're kind of designed to be played long range. I personally play them long range into medium range, as opposed to long range into out of range, which some players uh, like to do, but that's all right, each his own. But I like to always be in a position where. I can affect the battle as much as possible, so for me that means finding positions on the map where I can be shooting at someone as often as possible. So don't con don't confuse when I say I'm recommending playing them at long range to removing yourself from being in an effective position, because they're two different things. Um, but considering the lightly armored nature of these ships, now, armor England's important for all battleships, really all ships in the game. And if you're not familiar with that topic, I do have resources on my channel that you can check out to give you more information on those.
but two, three through five, especially if you're not angling your armor properly, players that know how to aim will wreck your ship, so be sure you're not presenting full broadsides to anyone in these things. And I don't want to suggest because the Nagato and the Magi are more heavily armored that armor angling's not important because of those tiers. You know, that's armor angling's even more important as you progress up the tiers just because players, A, they're more knowledgeable as they gain experience, and B, the weapon systems on those ships tend to be more deadly, so armor angling isn't a very important aspect of the Japanese battleship play. But I really like the guns. Um, I do. I tend to push in with the battleships. I'd like to push the play as opposed to sit back and be pushed by the other team if possible. So I'll start off playing long range and then move forward as the situation develops. And even close range, I'm not saying these things are horrible. Close range. And again, the. One of the commanders you can set up for uh, more of a close range brawler if that's how you want to play him. But, you know, if, in general with these lines of ships, you kind of want to you want to see how they're designed to be played and then kind of exploit those advantages when possible. So, you know, that's that's basically it, I think, for these. You know, they're, they're a fun line. I, in general, I think the Japanese line, all three lines of the Japanese ships are very effective. If I could only pick one nation where I had to play them, this would probably be the Japanese Navy, at least out of the nations that are currently available. So you can't go wrong with any of the ships in this um, package. Uh, if you do have any questions, I know we covered a lot, but there's probably other stuff that I was planning on talking about that I just forgot as the video progressed. So. Let me know if you have questions, comments, you know, just because I'm presenting the information, this is how I play, this is how I would suggest, in my mind, it's effective to play, but there's multiple play styles, of course, so I do want to hear from you if you have differing opinions. It's always, it's helpful for me, as well as everyone else reading the comments, to get as much input as possible, so I always appreciate when you guys uh, comment on the videos and kind of let me know where you agree and disagree with me. But if you did like the video, please hit the thumbs up. If you're new to the channel, consider subscribing. There's plenty more World of Warships coming all the time. And we'll see you guys all later. All right, peace.